one in five people will get skin cancer in their lifetime. And that means about 100 people in this room. And the incidence is only rising, so probably in 10 years it's going to be 150 people. Okay. So four or five years ago, we started building an app that would empower people to analyze their moles just by using their iPhones. And the challenge with this was that even dermatologists, when looking at a mole, can't even say uh, if something is malignant or benign without a biopsy. And that means cutting the mole out, putting it under a microscope, and then they know. But it's hard because they need to take into account so many information variables and um, things we actually don't know that just by looking at it is not enough. So um, to give you a taste, these are two moles we found in a study. Now, I would like actually to take a guess. Right? What I can tell you, one of these is malignant. So I would like people in the audience to raise a hand. The ones that believe the one on the left is malignant. Please. All right, some people. <laughs> Actually, the one on the right, that's a melanoma. Melanoma is dangerous, kills people. Um, if caught in the early phases, you get a 95% survival rate. Caught in the second stage, if left unchecked, survival rates drop to 15%. And you can see how similar the two, the both moles are. Actually, doctors thought both of them were dangerous, and that's why they cut them out. The thing is, the one on the left is actually a normal mole. Nothing special. So we need to do something about it. And the, we have two ways of attack. We can actually say, we declare war on moles, right? Moles are evil. We take all moles out, but everybody has one. And th that's not really an approach, is it? We can't take every mole out, so we need another approach. Uh, we go the route where we become really, really good in detecting melanoma and detecting skin cancer and catching it early, because that's when we can make a difference. But it's difficult. Doctors don't know how to do it without a biopsy, so what's the thing that makes the difference between two dermatologists? Why are some better, why are some not so good? It's experience. So a good dermatologist sees a lot of cases, a bad one doesn't, or sees less. Now, the point is, what we want to do is try to teach the algorithm to learn. Because a doctor sees in his lifetime about 50,000 cases, maybe, if he's lucky. While our algorithm, we already have a million pictures in our database. And the thing is, we already get 10,000 pictures each day. So if we can teach the algorithm to learn, like a human would do, it probably in six months time or a year, it will become really, really good at detecting melanoma. Now, <coughs> with the emergence of these technologies like self-learning algorithms, machine learning, um, technology to monitor people, uh, better resolution in sensors. We can actually do it. And we can make a algorithm that learns and crunches data on an ongoing basis. So we do it, but what does that mean? I mean, what does it mean for the, for the system? Because right now, we don't put a dent in that number one out of five. We don't change the percentage. We just try to catch things early so people don't die. But we have three parts, actually. One, it's detecting it early. Second, treatment. And third, maybe we can talk about prevention. Because right now, prevention does not exist. What we call prevention is actually early detection. So if we create an infrastructure that gathers data from all over the place, crunches the data, we can actually become so good in detecting it that it does not progress. Right now, to reach a doctor, probably the mole has already six months, a year. Second thing is, so we improve the algorithm, we bring people in really, really fast. Second thing is, if we manage to reach 
a large number of people, we can actually open up new research venues, maybe even understand the condition, right? So understand all the genes, all the risk factors, everything that leads to developing melanoma. And then if you start understanding it, maybe you can come up with treatments that are not 60% efficient or 70% efficient. Maybe we can come up with treatments that are 99% efficient. Now, imagine you know how to detect it. You know the people that have it. You know the gene profiles. You know everything. You can even treat it. So at that point, you can even move to the next step, which is active prevention. So the goal of this whole thing is we want to reach people before the onset of the disease. Now, what if, with all the technology and everything, you could actually predict when people will get something? You can actually walk up to them six months before and tell them, OK, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you're actually going to get it. So this is the path on which you need to walk just so we prevent the condition from happening. Right now, you go to the hospital because you have something. The doctor treats the sick, but we call it a healthcare system. So wouldn't the healthcare system actually be a system which keeps people healthy? That can happen. And the cool thing, it's going to happen with your phones, and you can be a part of it. Thank you so much.